Welcome back to the channel everyone, Triple M here. And today is video number two of my NAS setup series. Last video I showed you guys how to unbox the NAS, how to get the drives installed. So definitely if you just bought a NAS, go ahead and check that out. This video, what I wanna do is show you how to get it configured, get it on your network and get your drives partitioned properly. So we're gonna jump right into it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let's go. I do have the ethernet cords plugged into my network. Power is plugged in. At first it does a little boot up, but now it's in the process of making sure my drives are recognized. And if you look on the right side, you should start seeing the lights from the drive coming online. So we'll give it a couple seconds. And once those lights are up, they're solid green, that lets me know it's time to start to configure this NAS. The lights are green, which means my drives are initiated. My NAS is on the network. What I wanna do is get to a computer, on the same network and start the configuration. So there's two ways to get this connected to your network. This first one is to go to find.synology.com. So that, what that will do is scan your network, it will look for devices, and then it should find your NAS. However, in my experience, it's hit or miss. So you can see right there, it found a couple of my network attached storage. The one that I'm trying to set up, which is the DS423 Plus, is not currently listed. So it does tell you that if that happens, you can go to the Synology website, you can download a utility called the Synology Assistant, and that usually is pretty solid at finding the network attached storages on your network. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do is in the top, we're gonna go over to the right, and we should see the tab that says Desktop Utilities. We're gonna click on that. All right now we should see the Synology Assistant along with some other utilities. So we're gonna click on Assistant, and now we're gonna click on the Windows. If you're on a Mac, you'll click on Mac, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna go ahead and launch that. We're gonna install it. And let me just go ahead and fast forward through this part. Got it up and running. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click search. Now, should search my network once again. And now you see that it is finding all of my network attached storages, including the DS423 Plus. And you see there's two of them, which means that both network cards are active. And remember, we're gonna do a follow-up video maybe a little later in the series just to show you how to set up that dual network or network aggregation setting. So first, let's go ahead. We're gonna click on not installed. We're gonna click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and read the terms and conditions and agree to them. Click OK again. And now it should bring you into the actual setup. All right, set up your NAS. We're gonna go ahead and install. All right, we're gonna click automatic. So basically this is saying install the station manager. It's warning you that it will wipe your entire system, but that's okay because there's nothing currently on my device. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward again and we'll come back when it brings us to the next step. All right, so finalizing the install right now. You can see, welcome to DSM, this station manager 7.2. And I was gonna ask you to set up your NAS. So it's gonna ask for device name. Of course, this is up to your discretion. It's gonna ask for an admin account as well as a password, as well as confirmation. So let me go ahead and type this in, then we'll go to the next step. So now we're gonna go ahead and select our update options. I'm gonna select automatically. It's gonna ask you to create Synology account to receive more benefits. Definitely recommend doing this, especially if you don't have an account already. I already have an account and what I can do is go in, I can access my devices remotely, I can see information, see error codes. So if you haven't set up a Synology account as of yet, definitely recommend go ahead and do so. Let me go ahead and sign in, then I'll come right back. All right, so once I sign in, it's gonna ask you to create your Quick Connect ID, and this is how you're gonna basically access your system when you're not in your household. So you wanna create something you remember, but if you don't remember it, you can't always go to your Synology account, and it should have all your list of devices in that web interface. So create your Quick Connect ID. Uh, this will be used not only on the website, but also for your apps as well. All right, once it's created, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. All right, it's gonna have some other useful tools. You can either configure them now or you can go later. I'm just gonna enable these for now. I'm gonna click Submit. It's gonna give you some more options to register. You have your extended warranty, which you can go ahead and configure. It is gonna be a paid service, so you can always do that if you want to. You should see your prices. Again, up to you if you wanna go ahead and purchase the extended warranty. 
I'm going to skip this, maybe do it later. Click OK, click Next. Two factor authentication is there as well. I'll probably set this up later. All right, so you can see some information there, how to access your device remotely from the mobile, from the website. So you can always go ahead and set that up. Uh, enhanced security, something I'll probably get into later. Store and manage data. Again, we'll work on that a little bit later. You also have the option to protect your data. And all those options are still there, guys. DSM help, it is on your desktop, as you can see there with a question mark. So you can always get back to that later. So what we're gonna do now is get our drives configured and then set up our shares. That way we can access storage on our device. All right, so before we start setting up the drives, definitely recommend going to the Synology website and trying their storage calculator. This is gonna give you the SRS or Synology's version of RAID, how to best maximize your drive. So let's go ahead and we'll try it out right now. So we know that we have four four terabyte hard drives. So what we're gonna do on this page is just um, go to the four terabyte and we're gonna click here, one, two, three, four. All right, so that's step one. The drives are there. And it's gonna give you some options of what you wanna do. So you can see, it does have RAID 5 and RAID 6 estimate. So RAID 5, you can see you have a reserve space. That's for the system. So the system is going to take up some space as far as the operating system. And then you're going to have the green space, which is available storage for you to store your files, whatever you decide to do with it. So um, RAID 6, you can see um, it's going to take two drives. So two drives going to be for your um, backup. So with the RAID 6, two drives can fail and your system will be all right. RAID 5, one drive can fail and then you have to swap it out, then your system will be okay. But it gives you more storage here. Uh, for this, you can't play with it. I think I'm gonna end up doing RAID 5, but if I wanted to play with different RAID options. So the, the RAID 5 is gonna be equivalent to SRH. And then SRH2, that's gonna be equivalent to RAID 10. So this is what I'm gonna go with. During the next step of the NAS, it's gonna ask you how you wanna format your drive and you wanna just keep that in mind and keep what storage options you have. So below you can see they have RAID 6, RAID 0. So RAID 0, definitely not recommended. You are gonna have more storage. However, if you lose the drive, all your files are gonna be gone. RAID 1, you can see most of your storage space is gonna be for backup, so I wanna keep that in mind as well. RAID 0, again, so for me, the best option is gonna be um, RAID 5 or SRH. And like I said, they do have SRH2, which is the equivalent to RAID 6, all right? So we're gonna go over here back to the drive and we're gonna go ahead and start setting this up. All right, create a storage pool or volume. We're gonna hit start. We're gonna select which one we're gonna do. So I'm gonna do SHR. It's gonna give you the breakdown right here, minimum number of drives. Default tolerance, so one drive is gonna be tolerance. This is a recommended rate type for beginners. Choosing this type allows you to combine drives different sizes and future optimize volume drives to ensure redundancy. Select drives, I'm gonna select all of them. You can see the estimated capacity is 10 terabytes. We want the maximum amount of storage for the drives that we have. I'm gonna hit next. It does say BTRF is recommended. So BTRF file system support advanced features including shared folder snapshot replication and shared folder quota and advanced data integrity. I wanna go ahead and do that. The XFAX system is widely used for Linux operating system. It can be used to migrate Synology NAS running earlier DSM. So I'm not doing any of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. All right, encrypting helps protect your data from unauthorized access. In case your device is lost or stolen, all data stored in the volume, including the package LUNs, will be protected. All right, we can encrypt it. Encrypting is key system generator and storage. All right, so again, up to you. I'm just gonna probably mess with that later. So it gives you a brief summary of what you're doing. Drive one, two, three, and four. Capacity that we're gonna have afterwards. I'm gonna hit apply. And it's gonna tell you that everything will be erased. However, this is a necessary step, guys, in setting up your system, so click OK. And it's gonna go ahead and start the process. All right, so you can see it is in the process of optimizing in the background, it says right here. Enable notification, notification setup, so you can go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and click out of these. All right, click OK there. You can restore, all right. So it is optimizing in the background. So while this is happening, you can actually start working on other things. It's volume information. 
you've got a SSD it tells you that you have three drives and they are healthy all right so next thing we want to do is set up Synology that we can go ahead and access our files so you can see if you click on file station it's going to tell you there are no shared folders if you want to go to share folders please create share folder and click OK we're going to go to share folder and we're going to get this started and click OK it is going to automatically um, bring you to the setup I'm just going to call this main storage for now I'm going to leave the description empty all right so this is off the main drive as you can see there all right you do have the option to hide the share folder subfolder whatever the case is i'm just going to go ahead and click next all right enable additional security measures protect it by encrypting it again that's an option that we'll probably get into a little bit later i'm going to skip this for now enable data check some integrity if you're not sure what anything means, if you click on this, this option is only supported with BT RFS volume and can't be modified once the shared folder is created. OK, so again, up to you if you want to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to leave that for now. Now we get to enable the share quota. All right. So I'm just going to max this out again. Set it to 10 terabyte. Click next. And it's going to go ahead and start processing. Now I want to go ahead and give whoever we want access to the shared folder. All right. So we do have an admin and a guest. However, this is myself. I want to give it to myself. Read, write, read only, or we can do custom as well. All right. So I don't have a guest account. I'm not going to enable that option. Don't have another separate admin account. So I'm going to leave that as well. All right. You can see I can local users, local groups, system admins. I haven't got into any of that. So I want to make sure at least I have access to the share. All right. I'm going to click apply. We can exit out of this. All right. You can see the main storage is right here. Now this is our main storage, guys. We can go ahead and if we wanted to create additional folders, we can. So if we want to put a Plex folder, if we want to do uh, photo photo we can go ahead and do that and we'll we can probably make a dedicated video of how to structure your folder definitely it's based on what your preference is but this is your main storage so now you should be able to find this on the network so let's go ahead and give that a shot so i'm going to go to my file explorer i'm going to search for this ip address which is 1.24 right now so let's go ahead and do that so my file server i'm going to go backslash backslash 192.168.1.24 right now it's going to ask me for my credentials this is for that account that i created all right so you can see the main storage is right here this is completely empty and the cool thing about this is that i can literally drop a file and it should replicate because this is just going back to the folder all right so basically i just created a, a test image so i can just drop it on here and right here if we go ahead and refresh this part you now see that test image right there so so that's the basic setup of getting your Synology configured, getting it registered, getting it ready for use. The next video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the online access and how to get to your NAS from anywhere in the world.